Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Mark, and he didn't give me a topic, so I want to discuss something that I've only briefly discussed before. That, of course, is the second phase of Red Pill Rage. Being that I'm the one that defined Red Pill Rage back in 2014, I think it's really important to understand what happens when the first Red Pill Rage finally wears off. Some guys tell me that it never wears off for them, while other guys say it happens in about six months a year, sometimes two years after they fully digest the Red Pill. There are even five stages of grief, according to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Over a 30 year span, she dealt with terminally ill patients, and she would often observe the same emotional patterns and behaviors in those patients. Those five stages include denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. Those five stages are usually taught in introductory psychology courses in college. Elizabeth regrets writing those in that particular order because she concluded, sometimes they happen in different ways. People have often accused me of trying to keep men down forever in the angry stage by serving a rather basic understanding of human psychology on my channel. That somehow I'm actually keeping men angry against their will instead of letting them move forward. People make the assumption that men take the red pill and get angry at women and that it's my fault. But that may not actually be the way that it works. When I first took the red pill, I didn't feel anger at first. Instead, I felt denial and wished to solve the problem between men and women. That there must be a way for us to solve the issues between us so that way we don't actually have to deal with reality. This is why I believe that so many newly red-pilled guys that support anti-feminist women in the men's rights movement are so angry with MGTOW in the first place. I believe that they're in denial in either looking for a woman that's not like the rest. They seem to hold on to the belief that she's out there and if they only look hard enough and arm themselves with enough knowledge about women, they will be able to deny the truth about female nature. Or they believe that if they actually work hard enough with other men, they will be able to solve the problems in this gynocentric society, so they can go back to sleep through the men's rights movement. These men don't seem to want to grieve the loss of relationships in their lives or accept the reality of female nature, so when they hear men going their own way, they get irrationally angry at us because we point out the truth that they don't want to hear. The first thing that many men feel when taking the red pill is not the red pill rage, but instead they deny that men and women are different. They believe that there can still be true equality between the two different sexes. A while back I made a video called Anti-Feminism Equals The New Feminism, and there were a number of response videos from anti-feminist women. But why would they respond to me unless they thought what I was saying was actually a threat to them? Female skeptic or anti-feminist pages are filled with guys that want to believe that men and women are equal, and if only they can actually find a woman like Karen Strawn or Lauren Southern that understands what it's like to be a man, their lives will finally be good. Male men's rights activists and red pill light guys don't actually want to feel anger, depression, and get to the eventual acceptance of reality. Feeling those emotions is exhausting and leads you to an existential crisis. It takes a brave man to willfully throw himself into a negative state like that with no sweetheart woman waiting for him on the other side. So instead many men stay in the denial phase and continue to bargain with and deny reality. We all grieve in different ways and in different stages. This is the first place men get stuck and not necessarily red pill rage 1.0. The men out there brave enough to feel anger and deal with their grief go through the red pill rage, but when they come out on the other side, many of them, including myself, went into a sort of denial and bartering phase where I started dating again and as a result got into a few relationships. I also began white knighting for those women without even realizing it. It seems that I skipped the denial and then I went through the bargaining phase after that as well as denial. The men that actually go into denial first will pretty much head over to the MRA. The men that get angry first will most likely head over to MGTOW. That's why it seems like for the longest time there were nothing but angry men in the comments section below my videos. But eventually many men going their own way if and when they actually get over the red pill rage are going to date women again as a sort of a bargaining phase. I know it because I did it. Sure I got pleasure from the women that I was with, but after dating them and no longer being blind to female nature while doing it, I got angrier than I ever did before. I saw them behave in stereotypical ways and myself acting like a simp, and I got angry a second time. This I now call Red Pill Rage 2.0. I felt like my blood was going to boil over, and after about two or three months of that, I finally found acceptance. That's when I could talk to women that were attracted to me in public, and I no longer had to take them up on the easy opportunity. They would sit next to me and play with their hair and show interest, yet I was completely indifferent. I stopped caring because I knew what was most likely going to happen. I would date them for a few months and then that relationship would end and I would feel heartbroken and in the meantime, my YouTube channel quality would fall off. Tons of guys would instinctively know that I was dating because they would see the quality of my work go down. It happened before two, almost three times 
And I have to say that second red pill rage is far more intense, but it also doesn't appear to last anywhere near as long, because once I accepted the reality of repeating the same mistake over and over again, I stopped doing it, for my own emotional sanity. At that point, May of 2016, I felt a transformation inside of me, and I no longer had a longing for relationships. I finally accepted things. The thing that bothers me the most about relationships is the high price that I pay for digging through a woman's sandbox. My ability to think clearly goes away because of the fog that clouds my judgment. I think I finally understand why men like Nikola Tesla didn't marry or date. Can you imagine just how much mental horsepower a man wastes dealing with women so he can get love and sexual fulfillment? Why do they call it fulfillment when it leaves you feeling empty? Not only did I come to prefer being single and alone, but I also went monk mode. And I didn't see it as a sacrifice anymore. To date once again would put me face to face again with the red pill rage stage 2.0. I would just get really angry and aggressive and hate the way that I'm feeling and thinking. Why would anyone want to feel that extreme anger over and over again? The anger hangover is seriously not worth getting love drunk. Think of the first red pill rage like a massive hangover you get after years or decades of drinking. Someone finally told you that you now have cirrhosis of the liver or esophageal cancer and you're pretty pissed off. Governments put labels on cigarette packs but they don't put any on alcohol. So you're pretty much pissed that no one told you. I also think they should put a label on women. Something like warning may make you broke, homeless, and destroy all your dreams. Or possibly caution may trap you with children and steal your sperm. If women came with warning labels, then men wouldn't get angry to begin with. They would simply read the warning label and walk away like more and more guys are walking away from smoking. My belief these days is that men are not meant to fall in love with women no matter how much the musicians, movies, and matchmakers tell us that we are. I now believe more and more that there was actually a reason why successful societies in the past saved sex for procreation and nothing more. It wasn't because societies were trying to deny people pleasure, but they understood that a society of hedonistic men and women would no longer be able to think clearly because they would be more interested in the affairs of their own bedrooms and not necessarily the more important things in life, like human progress. Once we made sex about pleasure instead of strictly reproduction, that's when things went downhill. That's the moment that women realize they could use love to manipulate men and get what they wanted. Whenever I watch the film Demolition Man, I remember back to Sandra Bullock saying that having sex is considered gross in their society, and I think to myself, now that could actually be an ideal outcome. I know that most of you won't agree with me on this point, but some of you out there know exactly where I'm coming from. No pun intended. To have sex with a woman for the sake of love and pleasure is to give her the power over your own free will. Once you realize that, you're going to get very angry because you figure out that she wants you like one of those pod people from the film Invasion of the Body Snatchers. No wonder most women want to have sex with a guy they find attractive or desirable right away. They want to get control of his mind immediately by falling in love as soon as possible, and he doesn't even have enough time to see their flaws. The sooner a woman gets him in the sack, the sooner she can pretty much stop acting and start behaving like her real-life self. He, of course, accepts this, otherwise he doesn't get his next hit. If our world was actually from Star Trek The Next Generation, women would be the group of aliens known as the Packlets, while men would be addicts from the episode number 22 called Symbiosis. Most blue pill men are anxious, addicted aliens in love with the Packlets. The Packlets are a manipulative species that gets the sympathy of others by pretending to be stupid. They have incredibly low IQ, yet somehow manage to use the goodwill of others to build up their civilization off the backs of those people. That's kind of what women do. Use the love and sympathy of men to get what they want. Meanwhile, the men are too addicted to realize it. With regards to the different phases in the grief cycle, I felt depression earlier this year seeing other people and their families on my travels. But I learned to minimize how I feel now by mostly going to places where there aren't too many people with families traveling. I also believe that I really haven't felt a full depression yet because I've been looking for meaning in life outside of relationships, even while I was still in them. This channel has been the purpose that's kept me out of depression and giving me a new purpose. The YouTube adpocalypse has been a bit depressing for me, but I got over it because it's not the first time that a lot of my hard work went down partially down the toilet. If you've experienced Red Pill Rage Stage 2.0, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. You feel like you're willing to smash your fist through a door because you're no longer willing to tolerate bad behavior from women because you understand exactly where it's coming from. Part of that anger and frustration is that there's no solution to it. You don't have any power to put her in line because she has all the free will in the world to basically put you in your place. So you can stay with her and get angrier and angrier to the point where you have a heart attack or stroke. And some men do this. One of my friends does this. He trades years of his life for sex and reproduction. In his case, he doesn't understand female nature. 
He just thinks that everyone is incompetent and he knows best. But if he were ever to take the red pill and fully digest it, look out. He'd come after me for not telling him about it for many years. If he went through the Red Pill Rage 1.0 and somehow made it to Red Pill Rage Stage 2.0, I honestly think he might actually hurt someone. So in a way, it's good that some men like him don't take the Red Pill, otherwise, the world would have to deal with his wrath. His personality luckily prevents him from being inquisitive enough to take the Red Pills, so the world is safe. Now I just want to finish my thoughts on the second stage of Red Pill Rage. The only way to prevent it from happening over and over again when you date and break up with women is to avoid relationships and sex and go MGTOW Monk. This sounds like a big sacrifice, but it's really not. Once you feel that spine-tingling anger and frustration when you came face-to-face -face with female nature in your face, that's when you'll start associating all women with that feeling so you won't be needy around them anymore and you'll start acting like yourself. Because you won't care about impressing them, because you won't care about getting them in the sack. Ironically though, that's also when you'll attract more women to you than ever before. In the last month, I actually met three women that I could have gone out with and scored but two of them were feminists and I knew that the whole thing would blow up in my face. Because I'd get so angry I wouldn't be able to bite my tongue any longer and I'd go on the offensive. I could see the whole thing playing out in my mind right now, including both my anger and rage. Anyways, that's all I've got to say. Thanks again Mark for your donation. I hope you enjoyed this topic. Don't forget to smash the like button like women smash a man's free will by spreading their pate. Also bang the bell and check out the MGTOW mystery link. Please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Subscribe to me on Minds.com to get the video for the day after tomorrow. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the fist flying through the doorway. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.